great. We have people from all over. Um, this is really wonderful. So if you haven't seen a copy of the book, this is what it looks like. This is like really Harry Potter. And um, only the first book was published. It just came out this year. And sorry, I, I, more people are, are, are coming. I have to keep letting people into the room. This is wonderful. Um, so this was just published this year. And within, I think, 24 hours, the first edition was sold out. So then the publisher said, great, we'll put out a second edition. And within like two days, the second edition was sold out. Um, and so now the third edition is in preparation. Um, and you can find that online by searching Harry Potter in Yiddish. Um, it's published in, of, of all places, it's published in Sweden. In case you don't know, Sweden has become one of the world centers for the production of modern Yiddish children's culture because Yiddish is a national minority language of Sweden. And so the Swedish government subsidizes the production of Yiddish culture in, in Sweden. And, and in fact, in, in the beginning here, it says published, I don't know if this is backwards or not, published with support from the Swedish Arts Council. Um, and the translator, um, Arun Viswanat, or Arla Viswanat, as many of us know him, um, Ar 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 Arla is, um, in some ways, the perfect person to translate this, even though he's very humble and has told me that he's not the, the, the genius that everybody thinks he is. Don't listen to it. He really is a genius. Um, he is, his grandfather was Mortke Schechter, who was one of the most famous and influential Yiddish linguists of the 20th century, and I guess one could say of all time. Um, and Mortke Schechter raised his four children speaking Yiddish in the New York City area. And his four children now raise all of their children in, in Yiddish. And now the grandchildren, Arla's generation, are, are getting married and starting to have their own kids who are being raised in Yiddish. Um, and Arla's, uh, and, and so you, it, he's part of this whole dynasty of, of Yiddish linguists, Yiddish activists, who are working to spread the language. His mother is a Yiddish poet. Um, his aunt uh, is the editor-in-chief of the Yiddish Vorwärts. Um, and when he was translating this, he enlisted the, the help of, of his family and of his friends. Um, and so this, this is really the product of not just one person who happens to know Yiddish, but it's really the product of a, of a Yiddish dynasty, you could say and all of the knowledge and the wisdom and the experience that, that went into that, 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 that is that, that family's heritage and, and creation for the future. So, all right, enough of the, the introduction. Um, more people are coming in. Um, so I'm going to screen share the first chapter of this. Let me just get it open on my computer. And as I said, I run every week a couple of reading groups online where we read this together in Yiddish and translate into English. So if you're interested in reading this, it's never too late to join our, our reading groups on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, if you'd like more information, I invite you to send me an email um, at creativeshuli at gmail.com. Um, but in the meantime, we're just going to look at some excerpts from the first chapter. Um, if you have not read Harry Potter before, let me just set the scene for you. Um, Harry, so Harry Potter begins with this very uh, boring family called the Dursleys. They are very ordinary and they are very happy to be ordinary. They live on Privet, Privet Drive, Privet being these um, bushes that are, you know, sculptured, you know, with snippers and everything. Um, that's the kind of people that they are. The, the father um, sells drill bits, very boring job. If you sell drill bits, it's not boring. It's the most exciting job in the world. But for the Dursleys, it's this, this boring job. And they have a secret. And their secret is something that they are so self-conscious about that their greatest fear in the whole world is that somebody should find out about their secret. And their secret is that Mrs. Dursley's sister 
was Mrs. Potter. And we don't know who the Potters are yet, um, but all of a sudden, uh, Mr. Dursley notices as he's going to work that there are strange people all around town wearing cloaks and fancy colors. There are owls flying by by the hundreds in the middle of broad daylight. And he thinks, oh, this must have something to do with our relatives that we don't want anybody to know about. And um, at the end of chapter one, we discover that uh, little Harry Potter is being dropped off at the front doorsteps of the Dursleys so that they can raise him as their own child. He's dropped off by an enormous giant called Hagrid, who is 10 feet tall and about three times the width of a normal person, um, accompanied by uh, Professor Albus Dumbledore, who's the headmaster of Hogwarts uh, School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, and Professor McGonagall, who has uh, who, sh who showed up as a cat and then transformed back into human form. And the three of them are having a conversation about leaving Harry as a baby with this family that it turns out is going to absolutely despise him and make him live in a cupboard under the, under the stairway. And what's important for us today, and what's really fascinating about this translation is that each of those characters, Hagrid the giant, Professor Dumbledore, the headmaster, and Professor McGonagall, uh, Professor of Transfiguration, all three of them have a different Yiddish dialect, drawing on the cultural associations of these different dialects. Um, and if you read it in English, then you know that in English, the characters also speak with different dialects, different British dialects that have different, different uh, cultural associations. So let's take a look at the, the beginning of this chapter here. I'm gonna screen share it. And if you have any questions or comments at any point, feel free to put them into the chat box. So this is the beginning. Kapital Eins, the single Vasat Ibegelit, the boy that lived. Um, so it begins with all the stuff about the Dursleys. We can skip past that. And um, let's see here. So here we get to this exciting moment. Plutzling. Dort auf den Rog, wo die Katz hat gehalten, angestellt die Augen, hat sich bewiesen, ein Mann, a soi plutzling und still sich bewiesen, alle he von der Erde erreust gewachsen. Uh, so McGonagall in the form of a cat is staring at this point on the street and all of a sudden a person appears and it's Professor McGonagall, uh, Professor Dumbledore. Professor Dumbledore uses his magic to turn out all the, the street lights so they're standing in darkness, nobody should see them. And then here, uh, he begins to, to speak. I just heard a uh, doorbell here. I'm gonna let somebody else into the Zoom room here. Okay, so now we get for the first time, Albus Dumbledore, Dumbledore speaks, and I'm going to annotate this in a color. I'll do blue because blue is a good wizardly color. All right, so he says, as Tzve mentioned, Zonzachtreffen Gordo, Professor McGonagall. Um, so, as you know, who would have thought that two people should meet here? Uh, Professor McGonagall. Um, Professor already is bringing in the uh, Litvak dialect that Dumbledore speaks not just as a Litvak, but as, uh, as a Litvak who is the, the head of this big school. Um, and we'll, we'll see later on that his Litvak is different from McGonagall's. Um, but Professor Sh, the Sh ending, is the feminine, is one of the Litvak's feminine endings for Professor. Um, and then Professor McGonagall is very surprised. And she says, and I'll put her in green here, Vi hoste de Kent, as dos bin ich. How did you notice that it was me? How did you recognize that it was me, she asked. And, um, and then Dumbledore responds. Sorry, I have to clear the annotations. Mein Teire Professorsche, hab noch in Leben nicht gesehen, as a Katz, so sitz in a so steif. My dear professor, I've never in my whole life seen a cat sit so stiffly. And McGonagall responds, and now we start to get into the Litvakisms. Wenn du sollst gewen ob sitz in a ganzen Tag, bei Verziegelwand, wollten dir die Beine 
So if you were to sit your whole day on a brick wall, your bones would also be, be stiff. So here's the first now of these real litvakisms that I'd like to point out to you, which is in the word gansenim. Uh, so when I was a kid, I grew up with two, two Yiddish words that I knew, uh, meshuga and meshugane. And I never knew what's the difference between meshuga and meshugane. And I made up, up all sorts of crazy theories about what the difference was, and they were all wrong. It turns out that actually the difference is that ganze is the way that most Yiddish speakers say the word entire. Gansene is a Litvak way of saying it by adding this N-E, this nun ayin at the end of it. So instead of ganze, we have gansene. Instead of meshuga, we have meshugane. And, and, and we'll see some more of this later on. Um, there were some doorknobs, three more people coming in here. All right. Um, okay, admits, great. Okay, so we have Gansenem Tug. All right, let's go further um, onto the next page. A Gansen Tuggor, says Dumbledore, Bisha Sarum, dir Vert, Jehuliet, Kumedeka Herr, Benech Farbai, Efshira Tutz, Mishdoas, Vesimchoas. So this is Dumbledore speaking now, and we get already a sense now of what makes him, so to speak, a Rosh Yeshiva, right? The head master of this school. Um, one of the elements that the translator used is um, borrowings from Hebrew. So we have here this phrase, Mishtoas v'simchoas, and we'll see that almost every single time that Dumbledore speaks, there is at least one word from Hebrew or Aramaic in his speaking. Um, it gives him this air of being educated, of being upper class, of, of being this, this sort of almost a religious figure that people look up to. So he says, uh, So coming here, I passed by at least a dozen uh, parties and celebrations. Uh, and Professor McGonagall, uh, snorted out of anger. And she says, yeah, yeah, mehul yet und wie noch, um, es wollt sie gar nicht schatten, it also wouldn't be so terrible, wenn sie wollten sein, a bissel mehr aufgehiet. It wouldn't be so terrible if they were to be a little more careful. So here's another uh, Litvakism, yeah, yeah. If you were in my workshop yesterday, we saw this as well. Yeah, yeah, um, doesn't mean, as, as I often assumed, it doesn't, mean yeah, yeah. Yeah is the Litvak version of ja. Ja is how most of the Yiddish world says yes. Yeah is the way that the Litvak world says yes. So yeah, yeah, mehuliet, on vinoch. People should be a little more careful. Afila di muglin haben bemerkt, as es tut sich etwas. Even the muggles have noticed that something is going on. Mahotis de Monten Zeyren Ayes. They were even reporting it in their news. Uh, says Dumbledore, Chattas Sovas, Fallen de Kashtan, Chattas Sovas are whole hordes of owls. New King Polna Naronim, Zainan Zedochnit. Here's some more, some more Hebrew, Naronim. Uh, Naronim from Hebrew meaning fools. I'm going to clear that because Zoom will otherwise not behave when I scroll. Um, no came Polna Naronim Zenin Zedochnit, Tezonas Zen Nit Bamerkin. Are you saying they shouldn't notice it? The Fallen the Kashtern in Kent, Echso Zoy Leben, Vidos Hat Opkiton, uh, Daedalus Diggle. So he's just talking about all the different signs that are happening. Um, and then, um, sorry, that was McGonagall. And then Dumbledore re responds, Mexe Abyssal Fargin, and you can. You can uh, entertain them a bit, a little bit. You can forgive them. For the past ten years, we've had almost nothing to celebrate. Uh, answers McGonagall. Of course, this I understand. Here's another one of these Litvak elements that again we saw yesterday. If you were here, nit rather than nisht. So at this point so far, we have in McGonagall's Yiddish, um, nit rather than nisht, yeah rather than ya, 
And one of the interesting things, um, if you start to compare Dumbledore and McGonagall, because they both speak with a Litvak dialect, um, but as I mentioned yesterday, not all Litvak dialects are the same, and uh, Dumbledore always says nisht. McGonagall always says nit. Both Litvaks, um, but part of the yeshivish element of Dumbledore is he says nisht rather than nit. Um, another similar dichotomy here, which we'll see a little bit later, is that, as I mentioned yesterday, Litvaks often will say ingle rather than yingle, Yiddish rather than Yiddish, Eid rather than Yid. Um, and so McGonagall will talk about Ingela, the, the little boy, whereas Dumbledore, also a Litvak, says Yingela. So in a way, you could almost say that Dumbledore's Yiddish is much more polished. He says Yingela rather than Ingela. He says Nisht rather than Nit. Um, but the overall pronunciation of the vowels and everything and, and the vocabulary, a lot of it is, is very much in line with Litvak Yiddish. But he also uses a lot of Hebrew and Aramaic because he's the Rosh Yeshiva, the Rosh Hogwarts, the head of the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Um, um, yeah. Yes, please. Uh, she is the, in those, those McGonagall episodes, Noch Saran, um, Noch a Litvak element. Um, weil in, in Sosten der Satz hat sie gesagt, als man das verlieren, die Kopf. Und ich yeah. dachte, in Klauliedisch sagt man dem Kopf, nicht so? Yes. And, and so that's another thing that we spoke about yesterday, that in most Yiddish, there are masculine words, feminine words, and neuter words. In Litvak Yiddish, everything is either masculine or feminine. There's no in-between. And so, um, put, put differently, in most Yiddish, you have dad, di, and das. In Litvak Yiddish, you only have di and der, you don't have das. So what do you do with words that are das words, but what would a Litvak do? So whereas in most Yiddish, as we talked about yesterday, you would have das yingle, the boy, das madel, the girl. In Litvak Yiddish, you have der yingle and di madel. Um, and as well, kop, um, I, I suppose, uh, in Litvak, it's d um, in, in regular Yiddish, is it das kop or der kop? I seem to think it's der kop. Um, or maybe it's das kop, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, that's, that's also something to keep in mind here, that words that we would uh, use das with, and we would treat them grammatically as das words. In Litvak Yiddish, they are not treated in that same way. Um, here at the end of this, towards the end of this, is another Litvakism I want to point out here in the way that McGonagall speaks, Arumit. So I mentioned that Litvaks like to add on suffixes, right? Ganze, Ganzene, Meshuga, Meshugane, Arum, Arumit, Oich, Oichet. So this I in test is also another ending that is very common. So Arum around becomes Arumit. Um, oich, or as some Litvaks would say, Eich, becomes Eichet or Oichet. Um, that's another thing to look out for when you're reading something that is in a Litvak dialect. So, Geterumet Oif in Gas and Mittenhell and Tog, on came Mugla Shekle der Afile, Terzach mit Puste Klangen. So she's complaining about uh, the wizards who are going around in their cloaks and making a ruckus and not really being responsible because all the humans are going to notice that these strange wizards are here and it's going to blow their cover. Um, all right, so let's go further now. Then um, also, I should ask a question. Yes, um, please. In, in the same sentence, is the uh, mechanical book um, Affen Gas, instead of Der Gas, which means that there is a failure, which is not the same. My answer is I'm not sure. Um, it's a good, a good observation. And please continue to jump in with these, with these questions and observations. Um, I'm sorry that I don't always have the answers. Um, but, but, but yes, the, the, the gender of, of words really makes a difference in terms of the way that words are declined, the endings that the adjectives get, that the, that the prepositions get, and, and so forth. Um, so that's absolutely right. Um, OK. Dort sich geworfen auf Dumbledore in a scharfen seitigen Blick, wie sie wollt gehofft, als er wird ihr etwas äußern. Um, so now she's glancing at Dumbledore as if she uh, hopes that he'll say something. And then she goes on to say, 
this is really what she's interested in talking with him about. The Shana Maisa will join Zain as Grodin im Tog, when as Zetois, as we join Veris, Sofko Sof to Nit Givorin, Zon die Muglin und Alamen Oiskifinen. And it would it'd be really ironic, wouldn't it, if on the same day that Vais join Ver, you know who, has finally gone away, that on the same day the Muggles should find us all out. Um, again, Nit Givorin. Sis Taka Ois mit dem. Dumbledore. Here's another word to circle, M, which again we saw yesterday. Instead of im, uh, Aleph Yud Mem, meaning him, uh, Litvak, it would be M. And so when I first saw this, I actually wrote in the margin of my copy of the book, ah, there's a typo here. He meant to write Aleph Yud Mem. Why did he write Ayin Mem? And then I kept seeing over and over and over again, Ayin Mem, Ayin Mem, Ayin Mem. This is the translator transliterating with Yiddish letters how a Litvak would pronounce the word im as m. So it says, Taka ois mit dem Dumbledore. Is, is, there, is you know who really gone, Dumbledore? Let's keep going. Es weiß ich ois as yo, says Dumbledore. Yo rather than ye, yeah. right again. Dumbledore is, is, is very refined, very polished. So even though Litvox might tend to say, yeah, Dumbledore says, yo. Wir haben zu danken und zu leuben. We have a lot to be grateful for. Here's another uh, Hebrew. Kann ich dich mechabet sein mit der Zitin konfekt? May I offer you a uh, citrus candy, uh, a lemon drop, I think. I'm not sure what it is in the original. Um, a Zitrin konfekt. Das is a sort muglish zuckerl. I, I have a, a fondness, a weakness for this, this human candy. She goes on, I'm sorry, she coldly responds, As they say, now is not the time for lemon candies. And ye the fall, Fila oibe, Sistaka ois, mit veshin vemen. Here's another word, oibe. So again, the word is oib, but for the litvox, you would add on to it an ayin, right? Just as you had meshuga, meshugana, gansa, gansana, and you had arum, arumit, oich, oichit, here you have oib, oibe. So that's, that's something, again, really to keep in mind with litvox Yiddish are these suffixes that, that keep getting added on to the ends of these words. So, so in any case, she says, if it really is true that about Veshoin Vemen, about you know who, and Dumbledore interrupts her, Mein Teire Professorsche, bist doch ein Mensch mit Seichel? Kennst du nicht anrufen beim Nomen? My dear Professor, Professorsche, with that Sh ending. My dear Professorsche, you're a person with Seichel, with, with, with a good head on your shoulders. Can't you call him by his name? A ganze Narischkeit geworden mit Veshoin Ver. It's this whole Narischkeit already. This, it's so foolish calling him you know who. And notice here that Dumbledore says ganze. He doesn't say ganzene the way that McGonagall does. A ganze Narischkeit geworden mit Veshoin Ver. Schon elf Jahr prüf ich zu reden dem Eulem mit solem Anrufen beim Geherrigen Nomen. Voldemort. For already 11 years, I've been trying to convince people that they should call him by his actual name. Voldemort. The professor Professor McGonagall had a tzapel getan. She winced, but Dumbledore uh, kept on licking his his candy. Um, let's keep going a little bit farther down here. Um, and uh, he says, "As mahalt in ein zogen veshen ver, can mer doch gut zemisht veren." If you keep calling him, you know who, then. Um, Everything's going to get mixed up. Everybody's going to get confused. Um, the Hebrew word, I never saw any reason. I never saw a reason we shouldn't, we should be afraid to call him by his name. And McGonagall replies, Oif dir is this kein chiddish nit, nit rather than nisht, right? It's not a surprise for you. She says, "Du bist aber anders. Alle wissen doch, als du bist der einzige Verwemmen, wer schon nu gut soll sein, Voldemort hat mir gehabt." Everybody knows that you're the only person Voldemort was afraid of. And now, uh, 
Dumbledore comes in with this really juicy Hebrew phrase here, is showing Megazim Manamailis. Uh, perhaps outside of the Hasidic world, most Yiddish speakers would not speak like this. They would not say Bishwin Megazim Manamailis, which means you exaggerate my qualities, my good qualities. Um, this is very yeshivish, the way that Dumbledore is, is saying this. Voldemort hat yehata zelche kraften, was ich welze ze kein mul nischt kumen. He had such powers, I can never reach the powers that Voldemort had. And again, note that he's saying nischt, as opposed to McGonagall's nit. Das ist nur der Fahr, was du bist zu nu, zu edelmutig. That's only because you're too humble, uh, McGonagall says, to use your powers. And Dumbledore continues again with more Hebrew. Amerche noch, was is finster, hab sich schon nicht a zoi verretelt, sind die Madame Pomfrey hat mir gemacht a compliment für meine neue Oyedeklech. I'm, I'm blushing because you're complimenting me so much. Okay, so let's um, skip forward a bit because McGonagall and Dumbledore are going to continue chatting a bit. And the, dis the distinctions between Dumbledore's Litvak Yeshivish and McGonagall's more folksy Yeshivish, uh, folksy Litvak dialect are going to continue to be very much the same. Nit versus Nisht, Ye versus Yo, um, Ingle versus Yingle, adding the suffixes to the ends of words. But then eventually, there's going to be the introduction of a new character here. Um, so we're going to skip forward. Um, skipping forward, skipping forward. This is a lot of dialogue. It's really wonderful. You should all read it. <coughs> and then all of a sudden, they hear this enormous sound of a flying motorcycle that's flying over them, and it comes crashing to the ground. And the person who was riding on the motorcycle was, um, it says, almost two times the height of a normal mensch, and kimat finif moldi and almost five times the width. Poshit gizok that is given grois iber alamos, and he was huge by all dimensions. On a zoi vild, the person riding this flying motorcycle, the lange zoiten von seiner gedichte schwarze hor, the the long locks of his thick black hair on board in his beard, almost his entire face was covered by his hair. Uh, each of his hands was the size of the lid of a trash can. And the leather boots that he was wearing on his feet looked like uh, little dolphins. Uh, in the umgehaira muskleza orums, and in his enormous muscular arms, he was carrying a package of little blankets. And Dumbledore now greets this new character, Hagrid. But Dumbledore gives up with Verleichterung. Sof, go sof. Wo hast du genommen jenem Motorzikel? Where did you get that motorcycle from, Hagrid? You're here finally. And now we get uh, Hagrid's dialect, which is uh, it's a, a very exaggerated Warsaw dialect. It's not just Polish, but specifically Warsaw, but exaggerated to the extent that um, I think Arun, the translator himself, compared uh, this dialect that he created here for Hagrid as being like country bumpkin or like American hillbillies. Um, and so I, I, I can't get the melody of the dialect correct, so you'll have to forgive me. But Chom uh, Geborg, Professor Dumbledore, Sir, but that is gesagt. Um, so in this very first word here, we've got three words allied together. Ich, hob, uh, dem, hob, all together with these chupchiks here, with these apostrophes. Professor Dumbledore, sir. I borrowed it, Professor Dumbledore, sir, <coughs> he said. Uh, Der junge Sirius Black hat mir gelegen. Hotten, hot, dem. So here he doesn't even ich uh, hob, right? We don't even have the bet at the end of hob. gebrankt skinned, skinned is just kind, ser. 
Atzariba on came Menia, as Dumbledore. Menia is a good Hebrew word. It all went without any troubles. Yosef, when Hoy is a Gibbleed Nish main, is is a Gibbleed, so this is is Gibbleed Nish, is short for Nisht. Nish main the Achorve, no more than a ruins. Um, nor Chobm, again Chobm, three words combined together. Arois Geratovitz. Ada Sezen, Se instead of S, Zen instead of Zenin, Angekumen di Machanis Muglin. Riz, er is, Eingeschlafen beschas uns, beschas ins, Zeme gefloigen ibe Bristol. So Zen mir, Zenin mir, in this particular construction, in Zenin mir, um, literally, um, us, us went. Um, as opposed to we went, is again this very folksy sort of, um, you know, the, the area around, uh, around Warsaw. In Zemigefloig in Ibe Bristol. We flew over Bristol and she fell asleep. Dumbledore and the Professor Shem McGonagall, um, the Hein Geboig in Ibe and Peckel Koldrichlich. So Dumbledore and the Professor McGonagall bent over the little package of blankets. In a vein of coin, oist on Suzanne. Is gelegen a pitzel yingle on geschmackeschlafen. And inside was lying a tiny little child and geschmackeschlafen was sleeping uh, deliciously, was, was really having a good, a good sleep. Von unter a lock pech schwarze hor, hot sich a reus gesehen a schnittwund in a chikave forum via blitz. And from underneath his lock of, of pech schwarze hor, his jet black hair, could be seen a scar in a very strange form, that of a lightning bolt. So we're going to clear this and we're going to go down a bit. Dorden hat das, as Professor McGonagall, that's where it was. Yo, says Dumbledore, evit ebik trogen yenem shram. He will always carry that scar, says Dumbledore. Kens gornet tondafa Dumbledore. And McGonagall asks, Kens gornet, is there nothing you can do? And if you don't know Yiddish, but you know some Yiddish words, you probably know the word gornished. Um, a Litvak would say gornit, right? Rather than nisht, nit. Instead of gornished, gornit. So that's, um, that's over here. Gornit instead of gornished is what McGonagall is saying. A feel of vinich zolkenen, has nisht getan, says Dumbledore. A shram ken doch kumen. This is a very hilarious part where Dumbledore says, even if I could remove that scar from his forehead, I never would because, for example, I have a scar on my left knee, which is a perfect map of the London under, underground, uh, of the subway system in London. Okay, so let's go on here and get some more of Hagrid. Clear. Megich uh, says Hagrid. Megich, Megich. Um, so here we have meg ech. Ech as opposed to ich. Meg ech mech. Instead of meg ich mech, meg ech mech. And this is the sort of thing that, you know, in, when, when I'm running the Harry Potter reading groups, um, we actually skipped this section. We didn't do this in the group. I kind of wish we had. Because if you don't know these words and, and you don't know what's going on with the dialect and you look up these words in the dictionary, you're not going to find them, right? You're not going to find ech in the dictionary. You're, gonna, you're not going to find mech in the dictionary. Um, you just have to know that this is the, the dialect, the, the Warsaw Polish dialect. Ech instead of ich, mech instead of mich. Um, another famous form of ich that uh, the Warsaw Yiddish speakers are famous for, um, in addition to ech, is yach. And, and I think actually later on, he says yach as well. Um, there's a, a famous song, Yach bin a Mädel from Poland. I, I'm, a, I'm a girl from Poland with the word yach. So anyway, megech, megech mech gesegen mitten. Yes, please. Noch eine Frage wegen dem mech. In Klaul Yiddish wird man da was sich gesegen mit der Mützen. Aber mm -hmm. in Polish Yiddish nicht man das auch mehr uh, wie euch auf Deutsch, Le Muschel, um, das Mech, um, die, uh, jo, ich gesagt, Mech, die gesagt, ich, 
anstatt mm -hmm. sich im Team, was ist im Russisch, nicht das? Um, yes, um, I, I am not certain whether this is specifically a Polish thing, or if this also exists in other forms of Yiddish. I, I, my impression is that this also exists in other forms of Galiziana Yiddish. Um, but instead of saying, uh, zich gesegnen, um, using zich meaning oneself, meg ich mech gesegnen, um, using mich, me, as opposed to oneself. Um, but yes, you're right, in standard Yiddish, we wouldn't say mich gesegnen, we would say zich gesegnen. Um, thank you for pointing that out. Um, all right, so uh, going farther, uh, he starts to cry in Professor Shemaganagal, hat gesiket, she hissed, shh, kennst noch in you can wake up the muggles, and then he says, zeitz moichel, um, zeitz, here this is a very common element in modern Hasidic Yiddish, which we'll talk about tomorrow, instead of zeit, which would be standard Yiddish, zeitz, with the test samech at the end, zeitz moichel, hat hagrit he wailed, uh, here we go, yach, Yach kodn es nicht ois halten. I I cannot I can't hold myself in. Lily and James toit. Lily and James dead. Und dem klein chicken had in schicken da bechavek voinen mit die muglen schickt. Right schickt. M and then it becomes longer Uh Yeah yeah. Says Troyrik. Here's uh, McGonagall again with her yeah yeah. Instead of anisht, right? So all forms of, of nisht, whether it's nisht becoming nit or gornisht becoming gornit or anisht becoming anit for the litvox, vetmen uns oiskefinen. But you have to control yourself, Hagrid, because otherwise we're going to be found out. Um, let's keep going a little bit further. Es ist noch ein polnisches Element, in wo Hagrid sagt, um, ich kann sich nicht, um, ich kann nicht. Und in der Klasse wird ihm gesagt, ich kann nicht. Yes. Uh, yes, standard Yiddish, ich kann. And, and here, ich kann. Uh, good, all right. So Dumbledore at the very bottom, here he comes in with his uh, yeshivish with, with some Hebrew. Nu poter en esek. Uh, and Asik means we've, we've fulfilled our, our task. Um, and it's funny to use the word Potter here because this is about Harry Potter, but that's a coincidence. Anyway, Dumbledore with his yeshivish. Potter and Asik. Wir haben da nicht mehr kein Geschäften. Nicht mehr as opposed to nicht. Lo mischoin gleiche gehen, sich mischtatif sein in einem Yantif. Some more Hebrew. Let's go. Instead of saying something like Lomer Antel Namen, which would mean participate in 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 the Feierungen, in the celebrations, Lomer Mestatif Zayin in a Yantif. Let's let's take part in the celebrations. Yo, what Hagrid gesagt mit Zayra far dumpenem kol. Yes, said Hagrid with a very dampened voice. On yachtaf ot dem motocikl tsutsunamen fundanet, and I need yach right. Uh, here, let me put this here. Yach, daf ot de motocicle zu tunamen fundane. I need to take this motorcycle away from here. A gut novent. So here, uh, standard Yiddish, you could say a gut novent, but it would be two words. Here, he's slurring the whole thing together. A gut novent as, as one single word. Professor Shemaganagal, Professor Dumbledore, ser. Um, and then we're back to a little bit more dialogue, everything ends, and then we get to the end of the chapter. Everybody is raising their, uh, their glasses and making a lachayim to Harry Potter, Domingo Vosati Begilevt, to Harry Potter, the boy who lived. So um, this was uh, sort of a, a very rushed way of getting through the chapter. Um, and there are other dialects as well that are used later in the book. Um, several chapters later, when the family is trying to escape the onslaught of, of letters from the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, uh, informing them that Harry is a wizard, um, 
the Dursleys are trying to get away from this. They go to the back country to this inn behind a, behind a city and the innkeeper is speaking with a dialect that's very similar to Hagrid's. Um, later on, when we actually get to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, um, one of the, the characters there, his name is Filch, not a very pleasant character. He speaks also like a Litvak, but with a particular Litvak dialect that is often referred to as Sabisloshin. And the reason why it's called Sabisloshin is because they don't pronounce shins. Um, shins become sins. So for example, instead of saying Shabbos, Shabbat, they say Sabbos. And this is a very specific Litvak dialect. I'm not sure geographically exactly where it's from, but, but uh, Vishwanath has pinpointed that specific Litvak dialect, Sabbos Lushin, as the dialect for Filch later on. Um, and I'm sure that there are, are more, um, but those are the ones for now. Uh, one last thing, I was just flipping through on page 316. It's nowhere in here, but as I was flipping through the book, I found this great line in great uh, sort of Hagrid speak. Varts da, varts instead of vart, halt senk oif oif de stelschke, yachel kerek noch enk. This is totally Hagrid, but this is also very much how um, Hasidim speak today in, in Brooklyn. Um, halt enk instead of halt eich, oif de stelschke, yachel Kirik kumen, kirik instead of tzirik, noch enk, instead of noch eich, noch enk. So we'll get more into the Hasidic Yiddish tomorrow, but there are a lot of similarities between Hasidic Yiddish and, um, and Polish Yiddish. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Tomorrow we'll be listening to music by Lipa Schmelzer and um, Yoli Lebowitz, the, the so-called Pester Rebbe, because he's very good at imitating Budapest accents. So he calls himself the Pester Rebbe. And they're comedians, also have a serious side, but we'll be listening to a lot of their, their, their more uh, lighthearted music and talking about Hasidic Yiddish. So I invite you to come back tomorrow. And in the meantime, we've got about 10 minutes left here. If you have any questions, comments, uh, since we're Jews, complaints, compliments, uh, whatever, you'd like to, whatever you'd like to share, um, feel free to do so in the, um, in the chat box. And I see that there's already a ton of stuff here in the chat box. So I'm gonna go back up to the top here and read through. Um, okay, so there are the introductions. Um, ah, okay, so Naronim. I mentioned earlier that Naronim is a Hebrew word that Dumbledore is, is using. And Jordi um, comments that actually Nar in German means fool and then label Batwinik builds on that Naronim the doctoritum is not Hebrew. So this is interesting where you have this German word nar, but it has the Hebrew ending, im. Just like the word doctoritum, doctor is, is uh, from German, but doctoritum with the, the Hebrew masculine ending there is, is interesting. Um, that's, that's very interesting. Um, yes, yeah, somebody was raising their hand. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, that was an accident, sir. Um, let's see, I'm not sure who it was who was raising their hand or else, let me just flip through here. Oh, that, that had been an accident, so we go on. Oh, sure, sorry, that was an accident. All right, sometimes we can accidentally have, have questions and comments. All right, so anyways, Hasidish Yiddish, says Miriam Gloger, Hasidish is bases off of Galiziana and uses more Lushen Koidish. Um, so tomorrow we'll, we'll talk more about that. Um, I'm curious how Harry, Ron, and Hermione speak. Um, I'm also um, curious about that. I haven't, myself, I haven't read far enough in the book yet to get to Ron and Hermione, um, but Harry speaks like a Litvak. Will yesterday's chat be available somewhere? Yesterday's uh, webinar is actually already on YouTube. So if you search on YouTube for Litvak Yiddish joke book, you'll find the recording of it. Um, if you are on my email list, um, I also sent out an email this morning with a link to that, and I'll send out another email tomorrow with a link to the YouTube video of yesterday and also a YouTube video of today's webinar. Um, Sarah Elisheva, by the way, I like your name. I'm Shuli Elisheva. 
uh, where can I find info about tomorrow? Um, so if you join my, my email list, um, which you can do um, by going to my website, creativeshuli.com, and you can send me an email through there and I'll add you to the list. Um, if you're one of the people who uh, found today's workshop through the Olaf group, um, I also included a link there where you can sign up for, uh, for reminder emails and, and more information about these workshops. Uh, thank you, Naomi, for putting the link there, creativeshuli.com. And um, I also, if you go to my website, I'm also a Yiddish poet. I write poetry. I, I'm a composer. You can find some of my music, so other, other fun things um, to, to explore there. Um, other questions that you have or comments or anything that you'd like to share in the chat box? Ich wollte gerne gefragt eine Frage wegen der ganzen Übersetzung. Ähm, weil, ähm, also ich bin gerecht, ist alle wissen, wenn man ähm, ähm, am Mama löschen die Geräte in ähm, Ukrainisch, Jiddisch. Ähm, in Hosti Escher mit dem Gerät, äh, wegen der Frage, ob er hat äh, Banitz einen eigenen Dialekt, euch hat in der Übersetzung, und aus der Übersetzung hat euch ukrainische Elemente oder Sie ist im Ganzen Aqualjiddisch, was der schon mit ihm gesprochen hat. Weißt du etwas davon? Gute um, uh, uh, Frage, it's a good question. I, I haven't spoken with him specifically about that. Um, but one thing that I would say, if you're not aware of it, is that he actually um, created, um, he recorded himself reading the first chapter, and he did all of the different accents. Um, but you can also hear how he speaks, how he speaks Yiddish in that. So if you go to YouTube and you search for Yiddish Harry Potter, um, actually, you know what, I'm going to screen share going to YouTube now because um, I'm not sure, I think the video on YouTube might in fact be labeled in Yiddish, not in English. So um, I'm going to go to YouTube here and then I'm going to screen share. Screen share. From Google Chrome, share. Screen sharing has failed to start. Try again. Share has failed to start. Hmm. Um, let me see if I can get this up here. Screen share, YouTube. Here we go. All right. So here's YouTube. And I'm going to search in here. <laughs> Um, for Yiddish Harry Potter and see what comes up. So here we go. Harry Potter excerpt in Yiddish. Harry Potter oizzugoyf Yiddish. So if you click on that, it's 40 minutes long. I have to tell you, it's some of the most gripping 40 minutes of my life listening to this. The single was at Mr. and Mrs. Dursley von der Lagusta Gas Nummer 4 haben stolziert mit dem, was sie seinen Gewähnen ganz normal. So he, he actually speaks here with more of a, more of a, a Yivo Yiddish. Um, but uh, if, you, if you speak with him in person, which you should all do because he's a wonderful person, um, he, uh, he, he speaks with his own dialect. Um, let me see, I see a note here from the chat box. Can you drop the link in the chat? Yes, absolutely. Copy and um, send this to everyone. All right, so there's the link to this. Um, I had a question from, from one person um, asking, a yingle was hat ibegelebt, which is the title of the chapter. Isn't that a boy who survived rather than a boy who lived? Yes, that literally that means in English a boy that survived, but in the original English, the 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 phrase is the boy who lived um, rather than the boy who survived. So that's why I translated it that way. Um, uh, keep adding questions and comments to the chat as long as I have my browser open here. I'll just take this moment to um, give you a quick look at my website here, creativeshuli.com. Um, you don't need to bother looking at my picture on the first page. We can go to other things. So I have, I, I have, in case you're curious to know a little bit more about me, I have a PhD in historical musicology from New York University. I've also taught music theory 
at Brown University at New York University at the Borough of Manhattan Community College. I teach it privately and I'm also a composer. And since I'm really into fantasy, which you probably couldn't tell, given that I'm talking about Harry Potter, but since I'm really into fantasy, I tend to write fantasy music. So like in a, if you were to watch a fantasy movie or a sci-fi movie, what kind of music would you hear? That's the, the kind of music that I tend to write. I've also written some Yiddish songs for voice and various instruments. I like the vibraphone. So there's some of my music, uh, perhaps more of interest if you go to Yiddish. Um, last summer, when I was uh, really beginning to struggle increasingly with my gender identity, I began writing poetry under the name Shuli Elisheva, which became for me sort of an anonymous pen name um, to write about my gender struggles um, on, mostly on Twitter. Um, so I have here poems which I, which I wrote and I read these as part of a presentation for San Diego Pride um, last month. And this is actually on YouTube. So if you're interested in hearing me talk about my journey as a transgender Yiddish poet, you can find that on YouTube by searching for Shuli Elisheva, transgender, you'll find it. Um, but here I have the poetry in Yiddish and my own English translation with some annotations about when and why I wrote each individual poem. And if you're a Disney fan, you might like to see at the very end here, I wrote my own version of Speechless from the new live action Aladdin. Um, but instead of it being about the patriarchy silencing women, it's about gender dysphoria silencing my voice. But uh, go order me silent. I won't lie anymore. Enough with the worries. I scream from my bones. Here I am. So if you're a Disney fan, you might appreciate that. Um, I also have here um, the source sheets. I did an intro to Yiddish fantasy and sci-fi a couple of months ago. I did a presentation about a chapter from the fantasy book Yingala Ringala. So if you click on these, you can find the texts that we talked about um, in Yiddish and then also English translation. Here's some uh, vocabulary in case you ever wanted to know how to say sonic screwdriver in Yiddish. That's for the Doctor Who fans. Um, other words. Um, I also do Yiddish translations. I teach Yiddish. Here you can read my dissertation. So this is all just uh, a plug here. But anyways, if there aren't any more questions, if there's any more questions, uh, now is the time to put them in the chat box. You can also email me creativeshuli at gmail.com. I'm going to put that here in the chat box. And my website is creativeshuli.com. Um, and the same link tomorrow, three o'clock, we'll be listening to Lipa Schmelzer and Yoli Lebovitz and talking about Hasidish Yiddish. So, Zeit um, and Allah, and uh, I hope to see you tomorrow. And regardless, feel free to stay in touch. I would love to to, to hear from you, any questions that you have. And of course, I'm eager to learn from you as well. So let me close this, the, this share here. And I'm going to go to gallery view. And I'm going to unmute everybody. And we can all say Zeigesund. So, Zeigesund, everybody. Zeigesund. Zeigesund. Zeigesund.